DML error logging tables. We saw your videos on DML error logging. Thank you very much. And we're having a lot of success with it. I'm glad it's a very, very cool little tool. One question we have is how do we track which tables have error logging associated to them, assigned to them? If I have a table, how do I find its matching pair? It doesn't seem to be in the data dictionary showing the linkage between them. And there's a simple answer as to why we don't store in the data dictionary the link between an error logging table and its parent. And that's because there is no relationship. Absolutely none. Typically, when we use DML error logging, we implicitly create in our own minds a bit of a relationship because of the naming. If I create an error logging table on the emp table, by default, I get a table called er dollar underscore emp. And that seems to be sort of a bond between them. But that's simply the defaults. That's simply a convention. If you always obey that convention, this would be a simple query to actually look for the matching ones. You would simply strip off the er dollar underscore using substring starting at position five, and then effective, that might be wrong, that might be substring position six, I think you need to start at, probably substring position six, and you would simply join on the resultant two table names. That's if you've always done that default mechanism. But don't forget, the reason there is no actual linkage is because when you create an error logging table, you can nominate whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be in the same schema. For example, here, I've created an error log on my scott.emp table, but I'm putting it in, a, in the system schema, that's a no-no, and calling it anything I want. DML error logging does not insist on any relationship between those two tables. And in fact, I could create several different error logging tables, all for the emp table as a source, because I might want to capture errors for different kinds of loads into different kinds of tables. It's all possible. There's no implicit relationship there. If an error logging table for, for example, the employee table is could be named anything, is there a mechanism by which we could actually find them? And this is the mechanism I came up for this customer because they said, we think we're using the defaults, but maybe from time to time we've diverted from them. We'd like to track them down to make sure that we're not polluting our data dictionary. So these are the kind of things I could thought we could do is, we know the column names generally will all match up. So for every column name that's in the source table, there'll be the equivalent column name in the error logging table. We can't rely on the data types because error logging tables put varchar to max effectively for the column types. And we know that the first column is going to be aura error number dollar. I think we can safely assume that no one's going to use that as a column name for one of their normal application tables. So let's give this a go and see how we would do it. The reason I wanted to show you this demo was not necessarily purely for finding error logging tables, but a nice easy mechanism of when you have to try to compare uh, multiple rows as if they were one. I need to match where all the possible columns in one object, one table, match all the possible columns in another object. And this is a, a technique you might find useful. So here's my employee table. I'm going to create, as I showed in the slides there, an error logging table in the Scott schema called anything I want. Now, just to show that I've actually got a few error tables floating around here in my schema, the Ask Tom schema and the Scott schema, I just threw these together just that we had something to look at. You can see I have to do a bit of work here to make sure I match the base table of EMP with the table anything I want. This is a nice way of reducing all the columns for a given table down to a single representation of those columns. I can actually take the owner and the table name for these two owners, Scott and HR, to keep it simple. Rather than listing all the columns, I can actually sum the or a hash of them. By doing, taking the hash value of each column name, that gives me a numeric value. If I sum them up, I have the sum of hashes. That's not a guarantee that that is an absolutely immutable, unique value, but it's pretty close. When I do that, I now get one row per table and a hash which represents effectively a collective hash of the column names. Now I have one row per each table and this is a representation of the various column names in that table. So now I can start to build a very simple matching query. What are the error logging tables in my application? I'm um, effectively any table that has a column name consisting of the word or a er number. If that's in there, I'm assuming it's an error logging table. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get all the tables that are not error logging tables. So these are all my normal tables and hash up those column names. And it says, these are all the columns, all the tables in these two schemas that are not error logging tables. So now I've identified all the, effectively the left-hand side of my join. These are all the tables I know 
might have an error logging table attached to them. I can flip that around to do the exact opposite. The exact same thing, get all the error logging tables and now get only those tables that are error logging tables. Now I'm going to be summing up the columns hash as well here, but I don't want to include the first five columns because they are or error number, or error message, or error line number. There's, there's five columns that get put in the front of every single error logging table. The subsequent columns are the ones that match the names of my source tables. So by doing column ID greater than five, I can now sum the hashes of the column name for the error logging tables. And then that gives me all my error logging tables and sums of column hashes for all those columns with a not the pseudo columns provided by the database. And then I just bring it all together. These are my hashes for the tables that aren't error logging tables. These are my hashes for the tables that are error logging tables. I join them and I join them on their column hash. So if all the column names match up, I should get a hit. So we give that a run and there's our result. We have that the ask Tom table called employee. You can see I've obviously put a lot of employee tables floating around in my database from time to time matches up to the McDonald er emp. It also matches up to the one I just created, Scott, anything I want. So for this customer, that's a very simple query that lets them at least get a rough guide, a rough prediction of where the error logging tables are. I will finish off this DML error logging thing with, I do find it's an interesting question that came in in the first place, because I'm not sure why you should be particularly concerned. Error logging tables generally are transient. I wouldn't recommend them as, as being a permanent log of your errors, because the idea is, that's generally for rows you would either discard or you would go look at them and use them to correct them, etc., and to perhaps reload them in. I would expect over time any error logging table should either be discarded or be corrected to end up as being empty. I don't think, unless you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of them, that there are any real great cause for concern. If you want to look at what tables are being used as error logging tables, they have to be listed in the source. You either have to say log errors reject unlimited and assume the default or log errors reject and into your error logging table. You have to actually list the table. So I think just looking at your own source code is probably another way of easy way of doing it. Mm -hmm.